All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and the Bills are coming off a huge, huge win. Huge, huge win. The Buffalo Bills huge? are two and one now. What? Coming off a huge win. Coming was, off of now having oh. the biggest point differential in the NFL, I believe. Big things oh, are have, happening for the Bills right now. I have a huge gripe, man. Huge gripe. Oh, we're going to start off with a gripe. Okay, I guess we're going to yes. do this. What's I, gripe? I have such a, a huge <laughs> gripe. Um, <laughs> Kansas City is one and two, Kyle. And it's just, it, it makes me mad. Because you don't see yeah. Kansas City going two and one, right? You don't see them doing that. I wish the Bills were more like Kansas City. I wish they were. You don't see them doing stupid <laughs> stuff like going two and one, right? They're one and two, right? They're they're kind of holding back, letting teams get comfortable, and then Pat Mahomes is just going to explode. I wish Josh Allen would do that, but no, he wants what to go a- out there and play, you know, a, a pretty okay game. Um, there was a few mistakes, right? But he what a he flashback to week one right there. <laughs> Bro, Kansas City doesn't do this. Whatever, who cares? Everybody's freaking game. out about the the Chiefs yep. getting a big win against a good opponent week one. The Bills yeah. looking really bad week one, and now right. things are just completely flipped. Be all right. um, be all we right. we will cover some some uh, of our picks at the end of the show, but it one thing that's interesting about Kansas City they don't cover the spread anymore, which is not a great sign for the trend of the team. I think they're still going to be fine as a team overall, but a team like that, they should be covering spreads because of how much talent they have. Right now, they're just not. So it, interesting, something to pay attention to as their season moves on. But the Bills game. Yes. Huge yes, win. Yes, the Bills game. So Huge I, win. I took notes, Kyle. Surprise, surprise. You took surprise. notes. I took okay. Notes. I took notes. I, I have took some notes, notes too. Um, do, do you mind if I just get um, two of them out of the way real quick? and we can, you, we can, can, you can do all of your notes can, first if you want. I, I have um, I have three then in, in case you're okay. wondering and I'll go quickly for them. Um, Dr. Knox certified fresh. Um, he had one drop this game, but let me refute that one it, drop. Yeah, that he wasn't was, a drop. He had a linebacker literally riding him like a piggyback ride. So Dawson Knox, it's okay. You're fine. In my that, book, you're still at a hundred percent. That also right now. that was also a, a ball that was thrown behind him. That if he caught that, Correct. it would have been an incredible catch. So like, I don't, if that right. was actually marked as a drop, which it really shouldn't be, but if it was, I don't blame him for that. I don't think anybody in the fan base should. I haven't looked at it, but honestly, you know, it, it's probably just a pass broken up and not necessarily a drop. Uh, I think that's how the stat is going to be recorded. Not necessarily on him, but more on, on Allen. But anyways, if, if this was rotten tomatoes, he would be certified fresh in my book. Uh, moving on. Taron Johnson. Had a awesome interception that got called back because of like 15 penalties against the Bills. Kind of bullshit is what it is. I do want to talk about him just playing out of his mind. So if you yeah, have just Micah in general, Hyde, yeah, yeah, just in general. So you have Micah Hyde, you have uh, Jordan Poyer, you have Trey White just playing at, at the level that we expect them to play, and then you have guys like Taron Johnson who really came on last year um, and started making some big things in the second half of last year, right? Um, and now he it looks like he's continuing where he picked up last year, right? So shout out to Taron Johnson. He's just he, – he played really good football that game. Um, and then my last note that I had for this game was Zach Moss looks legit. Zach Moss looks like what we wanted him to look like when we drafted him. Singletary looks good too, right? If you're looking at it though, Zach Moss is probably going to – be featured a lot more than Singletary moving forward, which puts Singletary kind of on the background. So I started doing some research, like, because the first thought that came to my mind was, you know, the Bills will, will probably draft a running back this year, right? And I was like, why Why would you think that? So I went and I looked at Singletary's contract. Next year would be the oh, the second to last year on his contract. Uh, I think they can get out of it pretty easily. I, I, I think next it. year would be the last year. Of his You're right. I'm sorry. It's yeah. not 2020. Yeah, this year. This year is the second. It's 2021. Year. Yes. Yeah. So 2022 is his last year in his contract. So you start looking at it like that. He he might get cut. He might get traded. They might keep him. But I think the Bills will draft a running back. I do not see them paying Singletary running back money. No, they so they definitely won't. They definitely won't. I, and and when I say running back money, I don't mean like nineteen million because I can play receiver as well. I don't mean that type of money. I mean just an average running back, what seven mil, five to seven. I was gonna say I was gonna year. say I wouldn't even pay him four or five. 
Exactly. And I don't see them even going that route. So that's got me thinking, hey, Zach Moss will probably get – you'll see Zach Moss more than Singletary as the year moves on, um, as long as he can stay healthy, uh, and they'll probably draft a running back. It'll probably be another shifty guy, shorter guy, um, like the Zach Moss, like the, uh, the, the Devin Singletary. So those were my notes for the game. Yeah, uh, interesting. Interesting that you think you're already jumping ahead to potentially not even – paying always, Devin Singletary or always, cutting him. I know you're always, always thinking about like, season. yeah, I know always you're always, <laughs> always thinking about that. But the good thing is you hit on a couple of my talking points also. I'll go, uh, let go. me give my, the things I didn't like first. Um, okay. The first thing I didn't really like was I didn't think that Devin Singletary ever got going, but I think that's more due to how effective Zach Moss was than Devin yeah. Singletary himself. Cause Zach Moss was just so much more effective. Um, they also only the, ran the ball twice in the first quarter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was probably, it was definitely more of a passing game to start out. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I didn't like the defense on the screen play for a touchdown. I think that's a very obvious one. Uh, it was a very well run play, and I said this on Twitter. It was a perfectly run screen play and a very poorly defended screen play, also because you can have a you. perfectly run screen play that goes for twenty yards, thirty yards. But at some point, there has to be other players who are ready to get to the ball carrier, and the Bills just weren't ready. I don't know if it's because they took poor angles or they just got out of position, whatever it was. The way Washington ran that screenplay was absolutely perfect, and the way the Bills defended it. like I think it was Vernon Butler who was the only guy really chasing him at first. Uh, that That's not great. I think somebody actually responded to my tweet saying that. that like It was just a poorly defended play by the Bills. So I really hope that the Bills can get that figured out moving forward because I don't want to see a lot of screen plays run against <laughs> the Bills if they're good, yeah if they're going to be defending yeah. them that way. But like outside of that, the defense was just superb the entire day. Yes. The front, the front four, the linebackers, the the secondary, and I'll, I'll get to the front four and why I say Thank that you. in a second. Okay. Um, okay. But then the, the last thing, the only other thing I didn't like was that kickoff mishap, and I, I call it a mishap because. I don't totally blame that 100% on uh, Isaiah McKenzie because that was what at the 20 yard line. It the caught wind, him off guard. Yeah, the wind yeah. really, the wind really took that. That is a it's it was a bad play by McKenzie. It was a bad play by the rest of the Bills who were around that ball too, though, 100%. because somebody else should have. And I don't know if Isaiah McKenzie called out or anything or whatever. Somebody else should have been ready to just just catch the ball, catch the ball and go down. Because it's not a punt. As soon as the ball hits, it's live. You can, or as soon as the ball's yeah. kicked, it's live. So that that was just a bad type of mishap play that we're not going to see from this team very often. So it doesn't worry me moving forward. But I didn't like it, and obviously that it was a big swing in short term momentum. The Bills carried the momentum throughout the entire game. But that, yeah, that that's about it for my dislikes. You mentioned the defensive line, and I feel like you're going to talk about why you like the defensive line just yes. next. So allow me to set you up and allow me to help you change my mind. That made sense. Okay. Um, Seems they, like two different things, but let's move forward. Sure, sure. Let's, let's just forget about it. If you want to hear that again, just hit rewind. Um, <laughs> so they didn't necessarily get a lot of pressure on Heineke, um, and they, they got one sack. And that one sack was Star chasing him out of bounds. It was credited as a sack. So what did you see, right? Because I watched it on Condense. I only watched it once. Uh, what did you see? What did you like about it? What I liked about the defensive line is that they didn't they, – they just did their job and that's it. it. It's not like they went above and beyond like in the game against this, the Dolphins. So I, I don't like it line. because – yeah, and it's it's a good offensive line. I think they're, they're they could have probably made a couple more plays than they did. You're not always going to get home on every single play, correct? And I don't necessarily think they took advantage of every single opportunity. But when you have a running quarterback like Heineke is, and that's that's what he is. He's a running quarterback. When you have a guy like that to be able to disrupt him enough where he's thrown off his game, it's a successful game by the defensive line. Partially because of what the secondary did partially because of the defensive line. But I think the defensive line did enough to get him off his mark in the pocket and then make him have to worry about, okay, well, shoot, here's here's where like there's guys covered everywhere. Now I got to make a decision. And it just slowed him down enough where he wasn't on his game. 
And that, we've and seen, like, you've correct. seen him previous games where he's played a lot better than that. That was not his best game at all. He's only played five games in the NFL now, started. But he's played a lot better in previous games. So they did enough to get him off his game. That's why I have them on my likes. It's not because they went above and beyond. It's because they just did enough to say, like, okay, we did our job. Do you have the linebackers on your likes? Because yeah, I think we, I think Matt Milano specifically too. So I think more Matt question, Milano. So my question is, is because there's a lot of hate with Tremaine, right? And a lot of people said he had a bad game, right? And I didn't necessarily see a bad game. I mean, he wasn't like Matt Milano, where you know you, you, he's obvious there. But there was games late. There was times late in the game. Now, sure, it was already past the prime and all that other stuff where he was making plays and he was showing up and I started to notice him pop out on screen. Like, what did you see to make people think like, Oh my goodness. I hate what, why is there Tremaine Edmonds hate? I, uh, he's a first round pick who okay. is developing as, as a talent and who has a lot more potential than he's reached so far. And I think that what the way he played on Sunday was a very Tremaine Edmonds game. There was a couple plays where you're like, Oh, he's an athletic freak. There's a couple of plays where you're like, oh, he's huge in the middle of the field. And then there's a couple of plays where you're like, oh, yeah, no, like he does that sometimes. And I don't love that. And he missed some tackles. And that's a Tremaine Edmonds game currently. And that's I think that's why he gets some hate, because he does miss a fair amount of tackles. Um, and that has to get cleaned up. Yeah. But in general, like, I don't think he played bad. I just he, think he, did. he was. I mean, <laughs> he was. He's, he, he's just right now. He is. He's a guy who still he has a ton of potential, and yeah. he, we're just not tapping into it fully yet. And with some of the accolades he's gotten so far with being a pro bowler, he's going to warrant a lot of money. And I know this is jumping forward again. Yeah. Uh, Steve actually tweeted out something about a potential yeah. Tremaine Edmonds contract. I would not be comfortable giving him a long-term deal if this is all we're getting from him but I'm still willing to see how it plays out with him. So, like, I'm, I'm not upset. The guy that I really liked, though, obviously, was Matt Milano. He is just all over the field. It doesn't matter what play it is, is, where the play's going. He is the type of guy who he is a ball hawk. Like, that's what he does. If, there, if, if a play is to be made, he's probably going to be on the screen somewhere near the ball, somewhere near where the play's getting made. He is, like... I don't know if I want to go as far as to say he is the centerpiece of the defense just yet, but he's playing like that right now. The yeah, way he's playing yeah. for this Bills defense, when he's on his game, this defense is just at a whole different level. And he was on his game. Actually, he's been on his game all season so far. Yeah, and he does he does more than cover. He rushes the passer. He can stop yeah. the run. He's an overall really good piece. So I, I like the linebackers. Uh, with Tremaine Edmonds, I was going to put him at like a 6.3, 6.5 as far as like overall grade for the game. I thought he did okay. It's, like yeah, I it's didn't a fine see, game. Yeah, yeah I, I, didn't, I didn't see anything because I, I was on Twitter for two seconds and I saw, I hate Tremaine Edmonds. I was like, all righty, here we go with this. And I logged off real quick. So I just wanted to know because you're very active on game day. You, you tweet updates. You do a lot of things like that. Um, so I just wanted to know what you saw from from people who actually know a little bit more about football than we do, what they thought. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Move on to your next slide. Yeah. Um, so that that was that was that the secondary in general being able to force the turnovers. I think Trey White no had lie. the forced fumble coming in on when Poyer made the a tackle, peanut punch, and then both Poyer and Hyde got their interceptions. Just just good play all around from the defensive backs. So I, I liked what I saw yeah. just in general. I don't think we have to say too much about that because, like you said earlier, they're playing the way you expect them to play, yes. where they're just to, getting stops. We only have to say one thing, and that's just a question, um, and then you answer it. How many interceptions does Micah Hyde have so far? Does he have two this year? I think he has two so far he has in two? three games. And and how many did I say that he would get? I said he'd get double digits. I think or eight? He, no. I think you said eight. Yeah, eight? I think I yeah. I think you said eight. I think I said he was going to have five. So I we're both we're both looking pretty good. Sure, sure. But when he gets yeah. six, when he gets six, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, when he gets six, 
<laughs> that's um, all we had to say about that. Yeah, just just the defense in general. This is another game. We're looking at three games now where the defense is looking like 2019 Buffalo oh, Bills. Thank God. Where and we've said this plenty of times. If we can get the 2020 offense and the 2020 defense together, then this team is really scary. We have a whole season to look forward to where we get to watch and see if that happens consistently. But if they play the way they played on Sunday against Washington, this team just in general is going to be extremely difficult to beat no matter what the circumstances, no matter what team they're playing against. So now over to the offense. I think there's a lot to like about the offense. You already mentioned Dawson Knox, so I don't have to really say that. I like Dawson Knox and the way he played too. We're, this is a Dawson Knox podcast. We are it's, fans it's of official. Dawson Knox. It's official. Um, Cole Beasley. I was right about Dawson Knox and Cole Beasley also, by the way. Not to you know pat myself on the back. We don't I, like to I do mean, that on this show. We don't like I to mean, do that. I said, Emmanuel like Sanders that. And, I said Emmanuel Sanders and who had two touchdowns. Hold on, was, hold on. We'll, we'll get to him. We'll get to okay, him. Okay, okay, we'll get okay, to him. Okay, 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 All I want to say is not to pat myself on the back because we don't like to do that on this show. We do not do that. We are humble. I was I was two yards and a touchdown away from being exactly right with my prediction of uh, Dawson Knox and Cole Beasley score a touchdown and Cole Beasley over 100 yards. But getting them involved in the game plan helps the flow of this offense. So I, I want to see more of that, the way they kind of got them involved this game. Next guy up, Manuel Sanders. You want to take this one away? Because I, I loved what I saw um, from Emmanuel Sanders. He was there making plays. I'll give it up to you now. So I now I, I said I remember it very good. I have a very good memory. I said Emmanuel Sanders and I remembered Austin it very Knox good. In the, and in the slot. I get paid to write online if wondering. <laughs> um, I said in the slot, and you took it away with saying, Well, Beasley, both of us were right. I mean, that's that honestly. You could be you could be an idiot, but knowing that you abused the slot with a rookie cornerback with with some veteran guys, like come on, son, right? Um, but when I was watching Emmanuel Sanders play, I started thinking like, bro, he is Stefan Diggs light from last year. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's doing everything that we expected Stefan Diggs to do this year. And don't get me wrong, I, I'm not taking anything away from Diggs. Diggs, um, I believe Diggs had a very tough catch this game as well. I'm trying to think back. Um, but regardless, Emmanuel Sanders is playing like his head is on fire. Like, legitimately, he's really, really good. So teams start realizing that, and they're like, okay, well, who do we double cover? Do we double cover Sanders, or do we double cover uh, Stefan Dix? Where does the safety go? Who, who's getting safety help? You know what I'm saying? Which which one are we going to put it on? It just opens it up. So I think moving forward, you'll start seeing really good games from Sanders. And then the next game, you'll probably see a really good game from Diggs, and then it'll flip flop back and forth. But having someone who is, I I will say it, out of their prime right now, um, but playing like a Stefan Diggs light is pretty damn good for this offense. More than more so far through three games, more than worth the what six million dollar contract that he was given. Oh, yes. So oh yeah, yes. I Let's could not be more pleased. And and this is still early in the season, so that chemistry that he has with Josh Allen. It's probably big. only going to get better at this at that point too. You mentioned Stefan Diggs. I want to mention another guy, Gabriel Davis. We have not seen big games from either of them yet this year. Neither of them really have had a big game. I think Diggs had close to 100 yards in week one, but it was kind of like a dink and dunk, take the yards as you can get them. Nothing really big happened. He had a big catch against Miami, but he hasn't really had that big time breakout game yet. And the offense still looked great without him having that big game and without Gabriel Davis. And I'm not saying week one or week two. I'm saying week three. Neither of them were really involved all that much in the offense of like actual production wise. I've seen a lot of people calling for let's get Gabriel Davis involved more. Let's get Gabriel Davis involved more. I think he might just not be the, the third wide receiver on this team. I think he might just be the fourth wide receiver on this team. And I know he's still working through his injury, but when you have guys who play the way Josh Allen likes to play, I think guys like obviously Diggs is going to get more targets than him. Obviously Beasley is going to get more targets than him. I think Emmanuel Sanders is just going to end up getting more targets than him. So we just want to see when Gabriel Davis is fully healthy again. I just want to see him make those plays when those opportunities are there for him. 
And when well, he's doing you, that, the offense is going – like it's going to be literally play four wide. How do you stop it? You also have a tight end in Dawson Knox who's playing well. Mm-hmm. You also have running backs who are playing well so far this year. That's a, that's a disastrous game plan to try and plan against for a defense. So well, I love just I in general say. what I've seen. Like it's it, – uh, Stephon Diggs is not playing, you know – uh, like a hundred yard, hundred and twenty yards a he's game. Playing like a that. good game. I think he's and just he's, getting he's bracketed most likely. Like they're probably focusing and, more of the defense on him. So he just hasn't yeah. had that big breakout game yet. And it's okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's okay. Um, so I, I don't you know, it was this um uh, was this the second game with Josh going over three hundred yards and like four did he, touchdowns? Did he go over three hundred? The I, oh, this was the, the over 300 yards with four touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Are we talking about that? Let's just talk about what, Josh Allen now because what, yeah, all, and, the, all the people who are saying that he can't play in front of a crowd at all. He can't. He Stop. He can't, can't. That he's just, he there is 2019 Josh there. Allen. The last year was fake. All the people who are saying he's fake. pretty much anything negative about him last, this, like the last like two weeks, <laughs> y'all were wrong. Just flat out wrong because he it's did okay. it. And he did it with a full crowd, and he did take it for the whole L. game. Yeah, yeah, those people could just just go ahead, take your L, and we're actually going to be L. talking about some of those people in a little bit. But Josh Allen played a great game. That was the game that I think the Bills Mafia needed from Josh Allen to just calm down, just settle in, because he's not going to have a game like that every single week. However, when he has those games, that's what you're going to ride off of as long as he continues to have success the rest of the time. If he goes – two games like he had week one, week two, and then he has a big game and then two more like week one, week two. And then like, that's not going to be a fun pace to watch, (laughs) but just give us some sort of consistency. You don't need to go 350 yards and five touchdowns every game. We don't expect that, but like the way he played where he hit the open man and he was getting the ball out to the right receiver, those sort of things. I care much more about that then I care about the stats in terms of Josh Allen because those are the types of things that you can uh, – why, why am I – you can – repetition. You can, you can repeat. Yeah, I just you, totally you, blanked on that. But you can yeah. repeat those types of things. You can't always repeat the numbers, but the actual action itself, the motion of hitting the open man, that, that's, the t- that's the stuff that I care about, and that's the stuff I was glad to see from him. The so I watched the game. Of course, I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I broke down the film. I just want to watch the game real quick and give instant reactions. There was one Josh Allen play um, where I was like, Oop, "Nope, don't do that!" Right, and uh, he had Cole Beasley open in the flat, I believe, um, and he hesitated to throw it to him, and then eventually threw it to him. And because of that hesitation, and he was staring him down, um, you had the the defensive back um, run up and just destroy Cole. Right. So it was like, ah, no, no, if you're going to throw it, just go ahead and throw it. Don't sit there and hesitate. He was wide open he, and he was waiting for the big play. Right. So you could look at that from two angles. Right. You could be like, hey, Josh, do not uh, don't hesitate. Or, you know, hey, Josh, congratulations on not trying to get the biggest play in the world when you do have Cole Beasley open in the flat. Right. So I think he's there's still a little bit of him where he's like, man, I want to throw that long ball. But it's like, OK, dude, you know, trust your instincts, dude. Like, you know, he's not open. Go ahead. Throw it to Cole. Like, do not hesitate when it comes to that because that the defense is too far away for a pick six, but it that's something that could happen when you hesitate and you stare down the receiver, right? A pick six, open them flat. There's no one stopping them. Josh isn't going to run that down, right? I mean, he, he could, but he's a $250 million man. Like, don't run it down and get injured on a pick six. Like, I'm going to make fun of you if you get injured on a pick six, right? So, um, yeah, it's just little things like that. That was the only gripe that I had he, with Josh Allen. The only he thing played a good saw. game, though. But like, and you yes. said, even within that gripe, it was still technically the right play. It was just too slow of a play in yes. that situation. The last thing I want to talk about, I guess we'll I'll mention the offensive line once again. The offensive line, not great, not perfect, but I think it was another week of minor improvement, is what I would call it. Where I think they were, they went up against a really good defensive line, and there were some guys who got their lunch money taken. No couple times. penalties. But they improved. They looked yes. better. They yeah, you they did not have the holding penalties. Like it was it was a better game. And no, like I said, not a perfect game, 
but minor improvements over the course of the season at the end of the year, it's going to equal a huge improve, improvement cumulatively. So once again, happy with where the direction of the offensive line is going. Last thing, Zach Moss. You mentioned him already in the running game. I want to yes. talk about him in the passing game, though. Thank because you. I, take, think take that's, away, I think that's probably the reason that I like him better as a running back than Devin Singletary. They both have very similar skill sets. But I feel like when Zach Moss gets used in the passing game, it is just a little bit more successful, more consistent, that sort of thing. When they when they had, I don't even know like off the top of my head what that route is, but he came out of the backfield and then cut across the field. He ended up taking that for like 15 yards, I think 15 yards. But he made a good play. He caught the ball and then he got upfield. And then he had a couple of other catches in the passing game too. Like they got him involved. It wasn't necessarily running the ball early, but they got him involved in the game plan early and it was through the passing game. And I thought that just being able to utilize your running back both within the running game and the passing game is huge for an offense that needs to get more people involved who are not wide receivers because that's the biggest gripe with this offense is, oh, the, well, it's just a wide receiver offense. And they're great, do you, but they can well, do more if they get other people more involved, and they did that with Zach Moss. Do you want to know where it, it kind of hit me? I was like, oh, okay, word. Right when when he was catching the ball, it was hmm. his uh, touchdown. It was his his touchdown from Josh Allen, and the reason being is because it was a heads up play. Right, Josh escapes the pocket because of pressure. Yep. Right, and Josh could have ran with it, but he saw Zach Moss. So for one, kudos to Josh for just being like, oh, okay, I can just dump this off real quick. Right, but shout out to Zach for actually catching the ball, being a heads up play, um, still being aware to catch that ball in stride and then take it in for it. So I point out okay work right this this dude this dude actually can contribute as a you know pass catching back and he had caught the ball before that right but it was just standard running back you know um you know just catching the ball on the flat or whatever it is across the middle but this one this one kind of stood out to me because he had a step on the defender and Josh saw it it was on the run everything just lined up it was a perfect throw and a perfect catch for that so that one was very impressive to me yeah yeah just uh, getting Zach Moss involved. And I think the reason I, I mentioned this, I think when we had Meerkat on, he made his prediction about Devin Singletary and you were on that prediction as well. And I said, I think Devin Singletary is probably going to be the lead back by the end of the year. Maybe that happens sooner. I think it's still going to be more running back by committee in general, but I do still lean more to Zach Moss. The reason for that is just because I like what he does in the bills, potential passing game more than Devin Singletary, just personally. Uh, Devin Singletary is great if you run screens with him, but I don't think he is as good running routes as Zach Moss seems to be yeah. currently. So that's yeah. where I'm at. But Zach Moss had a great game. Two good games in a row now after his he had his fumble in the early on against the Dolphins, put together a great fourth quarter, and then he put together a great game as a whole this week. So when you combine his abilities – when he has the ball and also his pass blocking abilities, just huge for the offense to have him playing well. So that's, that's what I like from the game. My winner from the week, if you're ready to move on to that stuff. I have the one last yeah, one thing more? Okay. to say about the offense. And it's a quick one, right? You have Houston next week, right? And then the next week after that, you do actually have Kansas city, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Kansas city is struggling a little bit right now. Right. But you can't go into them and not win. Right, especially when they're down, like you have to win. So is this is this that, a must? Is that a must win or a can't lose? I forgot the difference. <laughs> fucking cares at this point. It, it's, it, it, it is it is what it is. Like you you have to win that game. Uh, so Houston is one more that you can't take lightly. Right, don't take any game in the in the NFL lightly. I, I get whatever. Don't be looking ahead. Right, but if you're looking at the first four weeks of the season as a dress rehearsal for when your offense actually starts clicking, when your defense actually starts clicking, right? You have one game left in dress rehearsal. And, and I just say that because of quarters in the NFL, you have the first four games, blah, blah, blah. This is dress rehearsal. And then you can actually get into October where games start to actually kind of matter, moving into November and then no December, and blah, 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 all that good stuff. So you have one more game to start growing that offense even more because every single mm -hmm. game we've seen so far, there's been growth in the offense. All I want to see in Houston is a a win 
and then B, the offense get a little bit better so they can go yep. into Kansas City, <clears throat> whose defense is struggling, and get even more better. Struggling there. a lot. But yeah, yeah, we will we will definitely be addressing that more obviously next week. But yeah, my winner from week from week three, winner of the week, just Josh Allen, just in general, because finally you have that big game. The yep. monkey's off your back a little bit. He yep. played really well. He did almost everything right. And now you could just move forward. Breathe a sigh of relief and just go out there and play your game because you did it already. Now just go replicate that. So Josh Allen, I think, is the winner of the week for me. If you want to throw an extra one on there, the fans, just Bills Mafia in general, because they got to see Josh Allen do that finally, so they can kind of breathe that sigh of relief too. The loser of the week is what I wanted to focus a little bit more on, though. I, I, I hate to keep interrupting you, but I actually prepared. So I have so you have one. Give, give have your winner, winner then. Give your winner. Uh, Justin Zimmer for making uh, Harrison Phillips obsolete in this defensive line. Yeah, I, um, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Har- Harrison Phil- or not? I'm sorry, <laughs> Justin Zimmer. Um, that man. When you talk about yes, there was I, I. I said earlier they didn't really pressure him. When they did, it was Justin Zimmer chasing him down. I'm He's all over the field. He's all over the field. He is chasing down, um, you know, wide receivers who are catching bubble screens. He's he's chasing Heineke in the backfield. He's making uh, stops in the run game. So shout out to Justin Zimmer for making Harrison Phillips a third round pick obsolete in this defense. Yeah, I'm a big that, Harrison Phillips fan. I, am, I was so. I was going to say that it, like making a Brandon Bean draft pick obsolete. Yep. I think it's even bigger that he's a draft pick. If he was a guy who's signed, not really a big deal. Like F. A. Obata not playing every single week is not going to be a big deal. It's it's yeah. cool when he plays. It's fine when he doesn't. It's not really going to be like, a, oh, my goodness, he's not out there. But seeing Harrison Phillips, who is a draft pick, who was looked at as like maybe this is going to be the year he kind of takes over for star. Out. Yep. Making him be a healthy scratch, it like Justin Zimmer's playing great in order to be able to do that. Like You can pretty yep. much count on that right now yep. is that Harrison Phillips – Probably expect him to be a healthy scratch. Is the show better when I prepare or is it worse? Now we'll let the fans discuss. We have two of them. Moving on I, to the losers. <laughs> I think it depends on the segment. Um, do you want to give your loser of the week first or you want me to give mine? Um, I have a special go. one that I think Bill's you, Mafia you go. is going to yeah, you go. You really go. like. My loser of the week. I'll, let me. My loser of the week is Nick Wright. And I, I got this. I didn't actually see this take because I have him muted on Twitter. I don't watch his show. Don't pay attention to any of his content. But I saw. I know like what he's done and what he's said about the Bills in the past, and that's kind of why I muted him. Just get rid of him. I don't need to deal with him in my life. It's fine. Ryan Talbot tweeted this, though. Nick Wright had the Bills on upset alert last week against the Dolphins. Buffalo won 35 nothing. Wright had the Bills on upset alert again this week against the Washington football team and stated that Heineke was a better quarterback than Josh Allen. The Bills won 43-21. to Not only that, but he has to try and find a way to spin why Kansas City losing is a good thing because he's like, oh, well, the reason that they're losing is because these teams are doing these crazy things because Kansas City is so good that they're forcing them to. And... Nick Wright just keeps putting his foot in his own mouth when he tries to have these takes of Josh Allen isn't good. This guy's better than Josh Allen. This guy's better than Josh Allen. This team is going to be incredible and nobody can stop him. The Bills aren't really a good team. Everything he does at some point is going to come back and bite him. And it did this week. I can't wait for it to happen again whenever he says something stupid again, which probably said multiple stupid things this week. But Nick Wright is my loser of the week this week and pretty much every single week because I cannot stand him. I'm glad you said that because my loser of the week is not is 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 not as good as yours, I should say. Um, <laughs> my loser of the week is is two guys that we've already talked about, and that okay. is uh, Stefan Diggs and Emmanuel Sanders, and it has nothing to do with uh, how they – played on the field it has more to do with dude what's up with the false starts like we know that josh allen's gonna do a hard count like why are you why are you having false starts right like uh, like Diggs for one you should know better right emmanuel sanders you get a I, yeah i think that's game, that's worse like, with Diggs than than it is with sanders yeah. i think that's the thing where sanders like he will get that figured out as the season goes on much more upset if Diggs does that than sanders at this point in the year 
Yes. And and how how funny is it when like a wide receiver is the one who 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 has the false start because they're like they're doing their little jukes at the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. It's like no one else is moving. It's like, what are you doing down there? Right. So those those are my losers of the week. It's just like, hey, get the false starts under control. Cause yes, Josh made up for him, right? He came back and he he overcame both of them, uh, I believe, thinking back at it. But like at the same time, like you could be playing like a powerhouse, like you know, take Tennessee for example, the Rams for example, to Tampa for example. Like, you, you could be playing the Patriots at home, you know, which which is going to happen, and everybody knows Foxborough is is a tough place to play. And all of a sudden, you have a false start, and you know, it, it just puts the offense behind. So get get that together. That's probably the biggest loser of the week for me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a fine one. Just bad false start penalties by the wide receivers. Um, do you want to do? I don't. I don't have any overreactions from the week because I think you're going to see a lot more overreactions when the Bills lose, obviously, than when they win. I didn't see anything crazy that was like, "Oh wow, we have to call that out this week," because that's part of the reason why I want to have that segment is whenever they we have that, just call it out, move on from it. So I, I don't have anything for overreactions. If you have something, we can we can do yours. No, I don't have any. I'm, I stayed off social media this week. Uh, as as you know, I, I stayed off yep. it. My life has been great. Um, <laughs> overreaction of the week, my wife doesn't like the ponytail that I've been rocking at the house. I think that's Is that I don't know if that's an overreaction. I think she's probably it's kind spot of an on with that. She did. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think she's probably story. I think she's probably in the right frame of mind. Funny story. I'm like, I'm changing my daughter's diaper, blah, blah, blah. And um you know, she's, she's behind me. She walks behind me and she looks at my hair and she says, you know, Hey, like your, your ponytail is, is not, it's not right. And I was like, Hey, would it be weird if you put my hair up for me? And she was like, absolutely not. So my, my wife put my hair up in a ponytail for me. Right. And you people ask me all the time. Next? Well, and see, and that's, that was what I was going to say. Like people ask me all the time, like, why are you growing your hair? I was like, okay, well I, I, I did 10 years where like I had to shave every day and I had to get a haircut every day. You know, it's just nice not to do that. And then like now I've, I, it's a running joke that like, Hey, I have a little girl and that little girl is going to have to learn how to braid hair. I'm going to have to know how to braid hair. So I've got to have long hair to do that. Like I want to be the best dad I can be. So if a little girl comes up to me and is like, daddy, can I play with your hair? It's like, absolutely. You can't put that <laughs> shit in some braids. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the type of dad I want to be. So like, I'm okay with it. I don't care. Right. Yeah. My daughter did grab my beard and yank it for the first time today. And she made it as dramatic as possible. She, she grabbed that and she goes, yeah, really loud. And I was like, Jesus Christ, you know exactly what you're doing. So anyways, that's dad life for you. Moving on to the next subject. Let's talk about some. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do our, our bets first, and then we will do the preview of next week, uh, or I guess a couple days from now at this point. But uh, I'll, I'll give mine first. I know you put a bunch of yours out every single week in your article. You can plug that in just a second. My bets that I'm definitely on this week, I got the Browns-Vikings going over. Two high-powered offenses. Oddly enough, I don't think that everybody thinks of the Vikings as a high-powered offense just because Kirk Cousins is the one leading it. Once again, met him, really nice guy. He's he's a nice guy, but he's just not a great quarterback. He's just making the right plays in the offense right now. So that I think that game at fifty one and a half. That's I got that going over. Cardinals Rams. I have that one going over. Also, it's just such a high over at fifty five and a half that I feel like I'll I'll be left out if I'm not rooting for the points in that game. Plus, once again, the offense is there. It, it's just hard to see them not scoring. 30 a piece potentially. I mean, the way that those offenses run, I don't know how you stop. And I know the the Rams did a really good job against the Buccaneers last week. That game still went over 55 or 56 and a half. But the, the Cardinals offense is just on fire right now. They're a different animal than the, the Bucks offense. So I like that game going over. I'm taking the Lions money line against the Bears because the Lions have been like, it feels like they're, close to getting that win and they just haven't gotten it yet obviously last week took a miracle for them not to this week i just think i just don't care what the bears offense potentially has because matt Nagy's the one running it and he's just a terrible coach i'm gonna trust the lions on that one patriots losing they're not covering the spread against the bucks the bucks are gonna come in and just tear them to pieces and then i got my twitter vote For the Twitter vote, go ahead and vote. It's out now. Washington football team against the Falcons. Who's covering that? Or Colts against the Dolphins. Who's covering that? Whichever vote there wins, that's the one I'm throwing on for my plays for the week. So that's what I got. 
So, I'm, first off, shout out to you for plugging my my article that I know for a fact you don't ever read, which is heartbreaking. No one. What do you mean? I, I read it. No, you didn't. You don't. Yes, you I did. Read it. No, you did. You might have yeah, clicked I know. on it, so I get a click, but you didn't. Read no, it. I read it. Speaking of my article, it comes out every Wednesday um, around one p.m. Um, which is about the time that you get the injury report and it's before the Thursday night game. So if you're looking for something to do, something to read, uh, Wednesdays, I have a, a gambling article that comes out. Speaking of the Thursday night game, I took the Bengals uh, minus seven and a half. Um, and right now they're losing, right? They're losing by seven. It's the first quarter. But between me, you, and the fence post over there, um, I knew the first quarter and the and the, and the second quarter is going to be pretty slow. Um, and then it's going to pick up and, and, and you know, Joe Burrow is going to slow down and get comfortable and, and go off on this. I don't think this Jaguars team is um, – um, built to to continue to last. Now, when the Jaguars win, um, you can obviously come at me and, and destroy me on Twitter. That's fine. I deleted the app, so it doesn't even matter at this point. Uh, moving on, Detroit. You took the money line. I took plus three. The reason why I took plus three is the defensive line for Detroit is actually pretty good. Um, they're they're pretty they're pretty decent, right? They're they're pretty decent, right? And then you go up against a, an offensive line that is pretty absolutely horrible, right? Yeah, come on now. 50-year-old Jason Peters. Yeah, come on. And it's so funny how, how NFL Network is like, you've got a veteran like Jason Peters. Like, bro, he's playing like he should, trash, He dude. shouldn't have been in he's, the NFL the last, like, three years. Yeah. Hall of Famer, for sure. Yeah, sure. But absolutely. he should not have been in the NFL the last couple of years. He's no, just not no Jason Peters is. anymore. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the, I'm, I'm taking them because of the, the, the line of scrimmages. Um, I, I love Detroit plus three. I, I like them, man. Um, Dan Campbell's got them playing like fire, so I'm taking them. Um, moving on to uh, Tennessee minus seven and a half. And the reason why I took these guys is because they're playing the Jets. And right now, the Jets, just like last year, anytime the Jets are playing somebody, um, you might want to just go ahead and uh, and take the uh, – the, the, uh, the, um, I just had a brain fart. Don't take the dogs. Don't take the Jets ever. Take the the, the yeah. favorite. Take the people who are favored in that game, um, no matter what. And Tennessee's favored by minus seven and a half. Don't have to talk about that one uh, much. Jets are garbage. Poor. They're a dumpster team. fire. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I took Tampa Bay at seven and a half, or not? I'm sorry, at seven. Um, it, the, the line hasn't moved. Um, when I wrote the article, on really Jets, surprised by that too. I thought I, I thought the line was going to move. Yeah. Yeah, we had that conversation. So I took Tampa. That one's an easy one. Um, and that kind of leads us into the bill spread that I definitely want to talk about and that I'm definitely not taking. Let's yeah. Let's, let's save that. We'll finish out with the predictions and the, the bill spread and all that. That's how we'll end the show there. That way we end it on a bill's note and not something else random. Um, I do have two other games I'm considering. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm considering taking the Broncos money line against the Ravens because right now it's a, it's a one point spread. They got the Ravens favored by one. Teddy Bridgewater is the master of covering spreads. And if it's a one point spread, I, but like, I just, I'm not confident enough in their team as a whole to go for that. So that's why I haven't, I haven't thrown that in there yet. The other one I'm considering Seahawks money line against the 49ers. I think the Seahawks are a good team. They just haven't put together a full game yet. I just don't believe in Jimmy G. So, I, I'm considering that as well. Neither of those have been put in yet. So that's that's where we're at. Bills versus the Texans. Not really considered a big game this week. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you're going. Not with. a big game so, this week. It, it's, it's, it's the type of game, though, that you can't overlook it. Because we saw this, whatever, Josh Allen's rookie year. The Vikings were on a roll. The Vikings were 17-point favorites. The Bills went into Minnesota and crushed them. It was like 27 to 3, 27 nothing, whatever it ended up being. So you can't overlook a bad team just because they're a bad team. I want to start out with that. That being said, this is a bad team, and the Bills should win by a, a wide margin. I do have one observation to make real quick, though. Davis okay. Mills. Um I, I tweeted this out before he started last week against the Panthers. He gives me Mike Glennon vibes. Just that okay. the long neck that he has, That's fair. just pure Mike Glennon vibes. You look him up, put it side by side, you'll see it. Not the same head shape, doesn't matter, but they just have these really long necks that I just can't <laughs> trust. I can't trust him. You can't trust Mike Glennon because of that, 
He just looks he's like can. a weird bobblehead out there. I don't trust David M- Davis Mills because he's a weird bobblehead out there too. So just and weird got, vibes I get from two, him. Two last names. Like, don't be dumb, right? Yeah. Um, that's that's, bad- that's actually a really good observation. Normally you see two first names. He's got two last names. Don't like two that at all names. either. No. Um, they have a really bad run defense. So let me jump in here and have an overreaction of the week, right, that we can clip and we can play back um, when it doesn't happen. Um, Zach Moss is probably going to have a pretty huge game um, in, in this game. Um, Cleveland. They had a running back that I don't even know his name. He's not one of the, the – he's not the big two on the roster. Had a really nice, like, 25, 30-yard run against this this team for a touchdown. So, it's like, okay, well, you guys – Oh, it was Austin. Felton. Was it Felton? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter. Don't care. Um, so, I mean, once again, Zach Moss is going to have a really, really good game. And I, I think I, I think this might be the game that we actually see a running back on the Bills have a 100-yard game. I would love if that's the case. Um, I will give my prediction in – in a little bit offensive game changers. I'll put that in quotes game changers. Uh, Laramie Tunsil is a very good player at left tackle for them. Yeah, that's they, fair. their tackles are good. Their guards and centers are extremely weak. Uh, hey. Nothing really up the middle for them, but they have good, they have good tackles. Who does that remind Brandon you of? Cooks is their offense though. That's their offense. Brandon cooks. That's it. <laughs> stop him. You stop their entire offense. I don't remember what the exact stat was, but I was listening to Joe Marino talk about them on his podcast earlier this week, and he said something along the lines of uh, that Brandon Cooks has like 31 targets so far through three games and no other player on the team has more than nine. That Mm -hmm. says something. Like they want to get the ball to Brandon Cooks and only Brandon Cooks. So if the Bills can just have Trey White and – just put Trey White on him. I know Trey White doesn't really shadow players all that often. Not really going to happen usually. But this is the type of game where I have no problem saying, Trey White, go out there, stay on Brandon Cooks, and just follow him around. Don't let him make a play because if you take away Brandon Cooks, you take away their entire offense. You take away Davis Mills, main guy that he wants to go to. You take away the only wide receiver who is worth anything at this point right now. And you just – like. I know they have running backs who had names, and I say had because they don't really anymore. Philip Lindsay, he's fine. Had a couple good seasons. David Johnson was considered the best running back in the NFL at one point. Not really anything close to that anymore. Mark Ingram had a couple good seasons, but he's old too. Like They have a bunch of running backs who had names. They don't have running backs who are worth anything right now, though. So... Not really any game changers on the offense. On the defense, it's kind of similar where they only have a couple guys who are really worth playing in the NFL, starting in the Your NFL. Boy. Your boy, Connolly. Huh? Is he still on their team? No. Connolly? No, he's, he's oh, not starting if he is. As far as I know, he's not starting. <laughs> But like it, I don't they, think they, he's in the league anymore. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know what ended up happening with him. To be completely honest, um, that's your boy. Though. But they they have two good safeties. I will say okay. that. Let's let's see. Don't it. have their names in front of me right now. Cool. But I know they have two good safeties. I'm I'm not going to lie to the people. I don't have their names in front of me. That's not the best job by my part. I will look yeah, it up I mean, in a little bit though. You're you're talking about it. You don't have it pulled up. That's fine. Whatever. Keep going. No, it's okay because I know they have two good safeties, but they don't really. Like, they're not going to be a team that gets a ton of pressure. They're not going to be a team that's going to be able to run with the Bills wide receivers. It's not like their secondary unit as a whole is great. They have, uh, I think, Zach Cunningham, at linebacker, who he's kind of like a mainstay, but no disrespect to him. He's not a superstar. Eric they have Reed, a lot Justin, of guys. Eric, Yes. Eric, is it Justin Eric Murray? Murray? Eric Murray. Justin Eric Murray, Reed. Justin Reed. Flipped him. Um, okay. So they, they, have, they have pieces that might, like, no, um, that you could see being good, right? They have those names out there. Like Vernon Hargraves was supposed to be like the. He was a first round pick, but, he, but he's he was a first round he's, pick. He he's whatever. Anything. He's whatever at this point. Uh, Christian Kirksey, uh, Zach Cunningham, uh, Whitney Merciless. Um, I think Whitney Merciless is, is probably you know him. Uh, Terrence Mitchell is another guy that that. 
they falling the way off, I've heard this described the way I've okay. heard this described their defense is that they have a lot of guys who are really good role players. They have a couple of guys who are worth starting, but for the most yep. part, they have a bunch of guys who are either past their prime and on the downslope of their career, which I would say Christian Kirksey is one of those guys. He he was a lot better than he is now. Yep. Or they have guys who are just not worth starting and they can't place them. Like they can't start anyone else over them because their backups aren't better. That being said, they have overachieved up to this point, which is really weird. You didn't expect them to. They're kind of frisky the way they play. They stayed in the game against the Browns. They destroyed the Jaguars, which I don't know how much of an accomplishment that is. And then they looked like they just left uh, DJ Moore wide open the entire game against the Panthers. Like they're, they're a frisky team that can make something happen every now and then. But as long as the bills go in and really just do their job, everyone does their one eleventh. the bills should win by multiple scores. That's the way I look at this because I don't think they have a true impact player on the defense. The way Brandon cooks is that true impact player for the offense. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree with that whole statement. I was, yeah, that's it. That's so it. I have um, three keys to the game, unless you want to add on more to that. No, no. Um, no, my, my, mine's off topic and I don't want to get off topic right now. Well, let's re- <laughs> just, right. just ask, ask me what it is at the end of the show when, when we're done discussing all this. Because it's, Okay. It's let's really see. Let's one. see if you remember that. It's then. a really, um, it's, oh, I, oh, I just, do it, just do it then. Just do it then. Okay. Fine. Right. Uh, <laughs> Didn't didn't Hollister sign with the Jags? Is that correct? I didn't pay attention to him either. I'm 100 percent positive that he signed with the Jags, um, and I'm I'm watching the game in the up. background. Um, yeah, you looked that up. So uh, I'm pretty sure he signed with Jacksonville. Um, and it's just funny that Dan Arnold. Um, he did. He signed with the, he signed with the Jaguars. It's. So funny that Dan Arnold is getting a ton of targets right now in this Thursday night game. And the reason why it's funny is because Dan Arnold was just traded to Jacksonville. So you got to think like, wasn't Hollister like a, like a, like a number one tight end, like game changer tight end. So it's like, if I'm he's pretty such a sure changer, if I remember correctly, there, uh, Pierre it, thought he was going to have a better season than Dawson Knox. But he's not to go at Pierre again two weeks in like, a row. <laughs> like two weeks in a row. I wasn't going to Pierre. I wasn't going to. In fact, you. I mean, how could we not right bring now. this up if you're if you're talking about Hollister? How could I not bring that up? I, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I forgot about that because there's been so many dumb Hollister takes on Twitter that it's, it's not even funny. But the the point I'm trying I think to make EJ is Daniels that, was the other guy who had the really dumb take about Hollister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll just say names, whatever. Yeah. Um. The big thing for me is is like if he's so great. Why is Dan Arnold, who is another semi to tight end, uh, immediately pass him after being with the team for like four days? He's backup worthy, and that's about it. That's it. He's backup worthy. That's that's what that's what Hollister is. Um, maybe, maybe he's yeah, injured or he was a healthy scratch. I I don't even know what he is, but he's backup worthy. This is a Dawson Knox podcast, yes. hands down. All right. Yeah, Dawson Knox would probably stop playing it like for three games at this point, and he'll have a better season than Hollister. We'll have all year. Uh, because yeah, I just don't really, I just don't understand what people saw with Hollister being a number one the tight hair. end for the Bills. Um, the it was probably the connection with Josh Allen. I don't actually think he's a bad tight end. I just don't think he's anything more than a backup tight end. So whatever. My three keys to the game: one, no stupid mistakes. That's that's the way the Bills would lose to a team like the Texans is you make stupid mistakes. And I think the way you make stupid mistakes is you overlook them really. So don't overlook them. Don't make stupid mistakes. Like this type of stuff that happened on the kickoff. It was a stupid mistake. That doesn't happen normally to a team that is as good as the bills. That's the type of thing that happens in week 17 when you're starting Cardell Jones and the jets score a touchdown on a kickoff because the bills don't recover their own, like the kickoff. That, that literally happened, what, four years ago at this point? That happened to the Bills week 17 against the Jets. It was it was disgusting. But like that sort of stuff 
you don't let that happen. You just make the plays you're supposed to make. Don't make a stupid mistake, and you're going to be okay. Uh, key number two, you make Davis Mills look like Davis Mills. We saw what the <laughs> Panthers' defense did to him. They were up in his grill the entire game. I think the Bills are going to have a chance to have another game like what they did against the Dolphins. Not as a whole, I think, where they shut him out, but where they just are all over the quarterback. I think they're going to be... I think they're going to be able to close the pocket on Davis Mills and make him really nervous because we've seen now we got some guys that can come off the edge. And I mentioned they don't really have really good interior offensive linemen. This could be a game where Ed Oliver really feasts and he could cause some problems because they have to focus a little bit more on Rousseau and Epinesa. So he could have a big game. No, it's, it's in Buffalo. Okay. All right. So I, I think, just make Davis Mills look like Davis Mills. The defense as a whole, if they play the way they've played so far this year, Davis Mills, I, so I, I said this with Heineke last week. He's only Heineke only had four starts going into that game. Davis Mills, he's only had one NFL start, and I think he only played like 10 games or 11 games in college as a whole. Yeah. He doesn't have very much game experience at all. It's not just he doesn't have much NFL experience. He was highly recruited. He was a five-star recruit. I think he might have been the top quarterback recruit of his class, but he hasn't really done a whole lot since being that recruit. Just make him look like the rookie that he is, the second round, third round, whatever draft pick that he is. He is not ready to be a starter in the NFL against a defense that is playing the way the Bills defense is playing. They have the chance to just wreck his day, get after him, hit him, hurry him, get him off his game early. And uh, to my next point, you don't let up. Because my third point is score early and then don't let up. Don't take your foot off the gas because this is the type of game where you can you can really figure some things out with the offense, even more than what happened last week. And I mean, like, like you could try some new things with the offense this week if you get enough of a lead. Throw some things out there, put them on tape, see what works, see what doesn't. But just don't ever get into that mode of like run, 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 run. Well, let's just run the clock down. Well, keep throwing the it, ball. It's, it's okay. It's like when they they went for two and they were already up by like three touchdowns at one point. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I was okay with that, right? And I know some people would be like, "Oh, well, it's it's not. Oh, that's that's kind of a slap in the face." Who cares? Like practice good point conversion. If you it's don't like that they're doing this, right don't now. let them maybe get the points. Them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Maybe maybe stop them, right? Go for two. Go for two every down if you're up by like three touchdowns. Like who cares? You know what I'm saying? It was in the third quarter. Go for two. I was okay with that, right? Because they're starting to practice their go for two situations and stuff like that. And like it, it sounds weird to say you're practicing while you're in a game, but like sometimes you need game reps with a certain play, right? So I, I wasn't I wasn't mad at that, but I agree. And I the only way, that. once again, the only way they can get to that point is if they score early and don't let up. Like they have to be able to do that. I, we don't want to see them just trying new things out randomly when the game. game is still on the line. We want to, yeah, we don't want to see something ugly because they're trying to do too much. Do what you know how to do, score some points, and then feel free to try some things out at that point. I don't have a problem with that. This isn't a get right game. This isn't a must win. This is a go out there and do your job, do your one eleventh, and it should be relatively easy as long as you do that. So th- those are my three keys to the game, though. You gave your prediction earlier, right? Zach Moss over 100 yards. Is that what your prediction is going to be? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. I'm rolling with Stefan Diggs here. He has not had his big game yet. We're waiting for that breakout game. He's had the just good, consistent play so far. Hasn't had anything bad happen. Hasn't anything had anything like really massively great happen yet. He hasn't had that big game. I think this is the week we see that big game happen because – they don't have a single corner on their roster who can hold his jock strap. Like they just don't have guys ready to line up across from Stefan Diggs. So I, I think know, this is have, the type of game uh, where he's he's going to be good to go. They have Desmond King as a backup. <laughs> yeah, they just don't have like I said they don't have corners they, who are ready to have, hold Stefan Diggs jock strap right now. As long have, as as long as everybody does their job. Uh, that has to be the caveat every time because yep. I'm not. I don't want to just talk trash for the sake of talking trash. It's they're still NFL football players. 
but Stefan Diggs is on another level to what they're on. So go out there, feed Stefan Diggs. I think Stefan Diggs goes for 150 yards and two touchdowns this week. Okay. That's, that's fine. I mean, I guess that's as bold as me saying that we'll finally have a 100-yard rusher. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say he's going to have like a 200-yard game or I'm not going to go out and predict a three-touchdown game. It's, it's, it's a prediction within reason. 16 touchdowns. Yeah. Wow. And he hasn't wow. had that He hasn't had that game yet. So that's where I'm at with this. Um, do we want to give – I guess we'll give score prediction after. Bill's over-under because we got to do this now. We talked about a couple of our other games. We're both not betting on the Bills game this week. I think I'm just going to put on a policy that unless I am – no, I'm just going to put in this policy. I'm going to do my best, and I will say do my best because I can't promise and I will never bet them. I'm going to do my best to not bet the Bills this year because I think I get in trouble doing that. And – it might be a bad policy to have, but when they start throwing out lines like 17 and a half, that I don't like that. No. 17, 16, I don't love that. No. That being said, I, I think the Bills cover. <laughs> I think the Bills cover. I, I uh, like it all makes sense that they do. They also they also lost the game that I bet them and won the two games I didn't. So I I know I have nothing to do with the outcomes of the game, but I do. So I'm not gonna bet them anymore. I, I wrote this in my article that comes out every Wednesday that you can check out on the Buffalo Fanatics.com. I wrote that this is a game that I'm not putting in a parlay, right? If if you want to bet it, I'm throwing a fiver down, I'm throwing a tenner down on it, and then I'm just gonna let it ride as it is, right? To, I, I had it at plus fifteen and a half on Wednesday. Uh I'm so sorry if the line changes, uh, for random people out there who really care if the line changes. But it was at fifteen and a half on on Wednesday. Um, once again, this is a game that I'm not putting in a parlay. It's it's not one that's it, – it's a parlay buster in my mind, right? Now, I'm not going to sit there and throw money on it and put it big in the four-leg parlay. It's not happening. But I'll throw a five or a tenner on it and, and see what – let it ride, see what happens. You're not going to win a lot of money by doing it, right? But who cares? It's the thrill of gambling at this point, right? So The only way I would put this in a parlay is if you're using one of the sports books that allows you to adjust the line. Within the yeah, doing an alternate, if you're doing an alternate line, spread. yeah, an alternate spread, I would be comfortable doing that. Take it down to like 10, throw it in a parlay yeah. that way. That would be fine. I just don't love that big of a number to actually put my own money on. But I, once again, I, I do think the bills cover. I think they're going to yeah. cover this week. Do you yeah. think the over under what, what do you think over under? Because it's last That's I checked, sad. it was at 47. That might that adjust, means, might adjust a little bit, does, but 47. Yeah. Um, better not to when it just um, people will get mad but it just um, but anyways 47 yeah that sounds that sounds right I don't I don't see you know in my mind it's like the bills go up early and they don't let up like that's what you want to see and you you see the Texans struggle I don't think it'll be a blow up of the Texans I think they get a couple of field goals um, I would I would take my heart says the under, but I suck at the over under to be honest with you. This would be a game where I, if I have to pick one, I would, I would lean more towards the under just because I don't think that the Texans are going to be able to score enough. But we saw last week, Washington, they couldn't score enough. The bills almost hit the over on their own. Like the, it's, yeah, it's exactly. possible when this it offense is. gets rolling. So you never know. That being said, I said that I think that, the Bills are going to have a similar defensive performance to what they did against the Dolphins. I think they're going to be able to do something similar to that. Get up in their face, don't let up, cause some turnovers, just wreak havoc. But I do think that the, the Texans will still find a way to score some sort of points. I'm predicting they score a touchdown and two field goals. I think a lot of it's going to be garbage time. I think the touchdown is probably garbage time. But I think they score. I think they get points on the board. I also think the Bills end up scoring 34 points. I got 34 13, hit the over under right at 47. If you're on a, if you're using a sports book that allows you to bet that, take a chance on it, maybe. That would be a crazy bet to win. But I, I got I got 34 13. That's my prediction. 27 to 10. Oh, you don't think this – I think this offense is going to be able to get rolling a little bit more. But I'm also I, hope I, – I think that's also a hope that – Last week, 
not even like a full continuation of last week. I just I'm I think my prediction is based off of this team is not a good team the Bills are facing, so I'm hoping they're able to somewhat continue the way the offense looked. Yeah, and you know, we want them to continue and I'm not I'm I'm not trying to put any bad jujus out there or anything like that, but like as a Bills fan, like you're like, "Oh yeah, 100%, like they might score 43 again, you know." Um and they can, certainly this offense can. This defense sucks, right? But it, it's one of those games where it's like, you know, you expect them to score so much. I just don't think that it's going to happen. It might it might shock us. I think this game might shock us. I think we still win, but it's going to be some you know, where it's like, okay, well, we're, we're not converting on third down. And that's just my personal opinion, which is why I've got it at 27 to 10. So and that's, that's fair. I mean, you see, you see stuff like that happen all the time, which is why we're both staying away from this game and not actually betting it because 100%. that sort of a spread is just scary in the NFL. You don't usually see NFL spreads be more than like, like 10 is a major spread in the NFL. So Kansas City had a lot of these spreads last year. Yeah. And they, they they don't cover because you get those they spreads. Cannot. But I, once again, I think the Bills cover this week. I can't. I just can't get away from that. Which is why I can't bet, bet them. I just can't. No, I can't do it. I'm staying away from them for now because I want the Bills to win. So I, I jinxed them week one. I think that's what it is. I think I just jinxed them by betting them. So I'm going to avoid doing that. That's the show this week, though. Casey, I think cool. this was awesome. a good show. I think this was a good show. Yeah. Awesome. Let's just end it there. All right. Bye, let me guys. get a go, Bills. Go Bills. (laughs) Go Bills.